ningetaka kusema sababu mengi yamesemwa na yale haijasemwa utayasema vile tu ningetaka kuuliza wale ambao wanafikiria ati kazi yao ni kula jasho ya wengine ati kuwajemelea jioni kuaibia mali yao ningetaka kuuliza waniangalie wanipime na wajipime all right, that is uh, from our archives there, museum, and uh, that uh, we can remember that face, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Men of history can oh, tell yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was my colleague. He was your colleague. Yes, we were in the same cabinet. All right. So after the. Those, eh? uh, whose size uh, he was uh, looking at? No, 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 yeah, no, my size now has increased more than then. Oh yeah, otherwise he was my colleague. But what do you talk, nice talk about hubris? Yeah. Can uh, hubris hang together with the uh, Murungaru when he was a minister of interior? Sorry? Fine. Actually, you know, he was minister for national security. National security. Which, which yeah. combined interior and uh, yeah, the, it was, uh, military. Oh, it yeah. was national security. Yeah. National security. Defense. Yeah. When you talk about uh, hubris in this country, you talk about people like uh, Attorney General Kamau Kamere, yeah? Yeah. whom people may not remember. Yeah. There was even such an Attorney General like Kamau Kamere who would stand up on the floor of Parliament and tell people that the Attorney General is a very powerful person. And I'm cautioning you to be very careful what you say. Of course, he didn't try uh, last, last year. <laughs> He got uh, embroiled in land issues, as usual. Mm -hmm. In this country, people at the top get embroiled with uh, <coughs> land issues in uh, Zimmerman. And uh, after a short while, of course, he had to be removed. And then there came Matthew Guy Moody, mm -hmm. uh, took over from Justice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. From him, Justice Matthew Guy, Guy Moody. Moody. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, talking about, uh, about uh, these whole things about land and uh, hubris, uh, I've seen a text message from uh, MP uh, Beatrice Lachi, uh, which suggests that uh, it is possible that 15 trillion has gone to Dubai to buy land by people in high places. People... Trillion or billion? Trillion. Okay, okay. 15 trillion shillings. Trillion. Uh -huh. Kenya shillings. In Dubai, buying property, why you are seeing people all the time going to, to Dubai, and the hubris that then comes with, uh, we need more money, you are going to pay more taxes. You're asking, Martin Olo is asking, he's asking this question, he's saying that a private developers uh, building houses and they are selling them and where is our levy going where are our levies going people huh? and people 15 trillion shillings uh, if that money was circulating in this country yeah, beyond even our budget yeah mm. exactly four times our yeah, budget. four times our budget, mm. yeah, our budget yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's four times yeah. uh, our, our, oh. our budget our annual and budget. that uh, explains why we are being yeah. suffocated uh, beyond, of course, uh, unnecessary items like uh, the, 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 the colossal sums that are supposed uh, to be renovating houses that do not need uh, renovation, right. that are buying cars, that are doing sundry things that we don't need to be doing. Maybe we need to tease out some of his demands as well, just uh, blow by blow. Uh, mm. First, they say, abolish funding to first lady, second lady. Why do we need uh, offices for those persons? Those are supposed to be just ceremonial positions that are out of courtesy. The citizens extend to some of these uh, families. I never knew during um, the times when uh, we had uh, Mamangina Kenyatta as the first lady. And President Kenyatta uh, left the scene when I was a big boy. Uh, a heartbeat away from the university in uh, Form 6. We never knew that uh, there was an office 
where there was a uh, mama Ngina and that there was uh, a vote going to her and that uh, she was uh, uh, spending that kind of uh, money. We never heard of uh, those kinds of, uh, of, 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 of things. So wh what are these things that we have brought up and we are spending hundreds of billions of shillings mm -hmm. to those kinds of uh, sinecure uh, offices? Mm -hmm. We don't need them. We don't need them. Uh, so, and of course, this goes also to the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary as well, because we have also some allocations that goes to uh, the lady there as well. Right? You see, Dibal, the question is, with the many challenges that we have in this country, what ought to be our priorities? And it would appear that there are certain luxuries that we can do without. There are certain good things that we can forego for essential things. Mm -hmm. What is essential in this country? Essential is health care. Essential is education for our children. Essential is employment opportunities for our burgeoning youth. Essentials are at least after retirement care for our aging uh, population. So, that there are things that we uh, want to do. We want to make sure that the older people in this society have a livelihood. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the youth of this country have jobs, ha are gainfully and productively engaged. We don't want to be spending our money to recycle people who have been in public service. You want to bring them as cars. Mm -hmm. You want to give people jobs, people who have had their moments. You want to say that you have more money to pay in interns, in doctors, and you're calling them interns. These are doctors trained who have finished. They are actually running hospitals and treating patients. And you're calling them interns as if they are just some people, people who are looking for mm -hmm. attachments. So there are things we are not getting right. Right. If we were to get those things right, then we would ask, do we have a surplus? If we have a surplus, do we mind splashing some of it on our first lady? First lady, or or second our, lady. Yeah. Or our second lady. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, we need to question why the rhyme and the reason to increase it by 17%. Yes. That uh, now you have it at what? 696 million shillings? I'm hoping How? that that is what is going to go away in the revised uh, bill. Because really, what the president has promised us is that there will be radical surgery down there. Mm -hmm. Beginning with that, exit. But, that, but if, when all is said and done, Dibal, the question we want to ask is what is happening to our money, for example? Can we account? Let, let me not uh, say anything else. Just tell me, last year, this is what the housing levy brought. And this is how it has been spent. We have an e-citizen that we are forcing people to pay through, and the Auditor General is telling us, we cannot raise 15 billion, not 15 million, 15 billion. And by then, nobody, we are not worried about it. It doesn't, it's, it's news seems so that just passes by. Mm. We have information that offshore accounts are now ballooning. And and 15 this, billion they are ballooning from... 15 <coughs> trillion. Trillion, yeah. 15 trillion shillings. They are ballooning from our taxes. We have somebody who is donating vehicles, brand new vehicles flashing 50 million a vehicle, that can only be our tax. It is, cannot be his resources. And if it's our tax, it can only be corruptly gained. So we must question, what is happening? Well, be, 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 beyond All that, right. we, we <coughs> also need uh, even to know about uh, the sovereign debt. Mm -hmm. It needs to be itemized. Mm -hmm. We cannot keep on being told year in, year out that we are paying for foreign <coughs> debts. What is the portfolio? Yeah. We need to know the, to the, the sum, the total uh, bottom mm -hmm. line, but we also need to have that debt itemized. We need to know how much was borrowed, when, by who, for what, and what the money did. It's not enough to tell us that uh, the euro bond we have uh, recently paid, I don't know how much money we have done, the last tranche. We need to know about the borrowings. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where 
this uh, Gen Z uprising. You have called it a, a revolution, the ball. It's not yet. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, yes. it's not yet. Uh, no, I corrected myself and say protest. It, it, I know you, you, no, no, you go hard on the it. school. Is the school you went uh, to? You, 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 are, you, are, you, you are disrupting the clarity of, 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 of my thoughts. <laughs> 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 All right, continue. Uh, this is uh, a prizing mm. because it's uh, an uprising. It's mm. more than a, a protest. Yes. Uh, it's taken now the character of an uprising. And if they push it through to the logical end, it will become a revolution. A revolution. So this uh, Gen Z uprising needs uh, sometimes to retreat, to go back, to think through the processes, to know what else they need to demand. Otherwise, it risks becoming a rolling stone. Yeah? And uh, it starts becoming a rolling stone when you see the numbers beginning to diminish. And uh, the course is not very clear what they, they want uh, next. And therefore, itemized and very clear thinking and things, like uh, when they say we would like uh, these things of First Lady to be removed, expenditure on that, when they say things like uh, we would like the sovereign debt to be itemized and to agree to be part of the process in the agreement of how we are going to address that sovereign debt. Kama yuko kwa ilibiwa na watu wakaenda kununua land huko Dubai and uh, in Paris and in Cayman Islands and in such other places, those persons should be held responsible. They should not only refund that money, they should also serve a jail term. That is when you start having what is called a revolution because you start having a fundamental mm -hmm. change. Right. Mm -hmm. So the next item up is, because uh, the president was particularly intent also on uh, when he said that corruption will be on the forefront uh, of his next you know, agenda, clamping yeah. down on corruption. Now they're saying, fire corrupt cabinet secretaries. You can begin from there. Uh, we still have cases that have not been resolved. The edible oils is one of them. Fertilizer, I think that now is done and dusted and we moved on as a country. But fire corrupt cabinet secretaries. Well, <coughs> I still, I'm uh, still sympathizing with my brother, the president, William. Uh, you sympathize a yeah. lot today. Since sympathy. they are, no, no, my sympathy is, yeah. since yeah. today is important <laughs> that uh, important. he gets some sympathy. <laughs> he no, he, he no. needs that sympathy because today. the way I saw his body language on, on, uh, on the two, the two statements he made, I realized that this is a man under siege. Even when he was sounding tough, and making certain tough statements, I could see behind him there was something not clicking. But he was advised. Of, of course, your, your optics uh, before then was very combative. Could you just tone down yes. so yes. that he can be more receptive? Yeah. yeah. So then he toned down. Yeah. Slow, so he allowed how, how do you? Yes. And when he toned down, I could see now he's weather beaten. <laughs> and uh, in the midst of, the, uh, of all those who are there, the same people who have made him look so bad <coughs> was still clapping for what he was saying. Yeah. So I'm still telling him just he should act with humility. He should not be worried. We have accepted he's our president. We have accepted that uh, he needs to improve for him to complete the term. I'm not worried about his re-election. Whether he's re-elected or not, that's another matter. But I'm worried about what was happening on Tuesday and even Monday where people was just saying Ruta must go. And for me, who, was, who is used to democracy, whether whatever the form, <coughs> I believe the worst democratic government is better than the alternative. So my, my take is I, I want to advise him on a number of issues. One, recruitment of young men and women to the military and to various positions. There is a tendency in this regime that letters are given for boys and girls to be recruited into the military and those letters are sold outside there for as high as 400,000. And these are the things that make people so annoyed because a young man, knowing that Barak Muluka has 400 letters or even 40 letters, 
that you could have benefited, they go to somebody else. This is what is making this regime unpopular even at home in Elred. Elred is uh, the backyard of William Ruto, but uh, Elred was not as settled as it should have been the case. I'm also beseeching him that to look for somebody, perhaps at the level of the head of public service, somebody who has the capacity and the patience and the experience the way Ambassador Mudaura was for Kibaki for the period Kibaki was the president. Mudaura, when you went as a minister to see him, <coughs> because we did not like bothering the president, given the condition he was in at the beginning of time, and even subsequently, it was easier to pin down government transactions through the office of head of public service. He would bring out a black book, write everything that you tell him. There could be 10 things that you tell him. And from time to time, he'll call you and tell you issue number seven, which was one, two, three. We have resolved it in this particular manner. <coughs> issue number nine, we cannot resolve it because of one, two, three. In that case, there was communication within government. But today, when you listen to ministers, each minister is talking from their own quarters in a way that you feel all these ministries are in some pigeon holes mm. and they are not able to communicate uh, among themselves. And I don't expect the president to have all the time mm -hmm. to travel abroad, to do all the things about national security and still deal with issues of administration. The third issue uh, that I feel the president should do is to institutionalize. You see now, we have this house levy, which he himself said it was not a tax. It has become a tax, and it is not being domiciled in National Housing Corporation. It is being domiciled elsewhere, and which board we do not know. It needs to institutionalize so that we know in which institution is the money that we are collecting for affordable housing lying. We are told the money is lying in uh, treasury bonds or whatever, infrastructure bonds. This is something that it needs to improve to institutionalize everything so that we know where to go when we want certain things. We know where to go. This NHIF and, 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 and the new one, uh, with the SHIF, in all transitions is supposed to transit with liabilities of the previous organization for purposes of effective monitoring. Otherwise, when you don't transit with the liabilities of the previous organization, what you are telling us is that there are certain things thank you, you don't want us to know. All right, thank you. Yeah. You didn't answer the question of uh, firing the corrupt cabinet secretary, but uh, let me, let me, no, let me no, throw that to... But, you know, firing them... Let me, let me throw that and to... Them, yeah. And Why replacing them with others who will be as corrupt. 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 <laughs> you see, we've lost the war on corruption. Not yet. Mm -hmm. We've lost it. We have, the, never even started, we have never even started the war on corruption. Because right inside our budgeting is corruption. So when we talk of, when the young people are talking of budgeted corruption, when you give 860 million and you say confidential fund, what do you say? It's money that can be spent without accounting for it, without using any voucher, without using any uh, or, or any, any, any accountable... A precept for some ministries. Now, the other, in this finance bill, one of the items that was removed, in others VAT was removed on, are procurements by NIS. So that NIS can procure in any manner and you don't trace it because then they also don't use any 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 there's no paper tree in terms of the expenditure fair enough but you are allocating them 45 billion shillings and you there's no accountability around it there is no paper trail around it it's not audited fair enough you've made in the uh, espionage or intelligence very important for what gain Maybe, you maybe, cannot maybe that, that's why we have some sloppy work from uh, Nudin Haji as it's no, being no, pushed no, by the president. There's, there's, there's there is no sufficient uh, facility, it's not facilitated enough. Five billion in mm. this finance bill, that's what was there. But then what you're asking is 
how much else are you making available for your ordinary policing, which then is a day-to-day -day affair, are they well uh, resourced to the... In other words, our priorities are always around things to do with spying on ourselves, uh, espionage on ourselves, uh, maintaining the political system itself, and much of that is done without accountability. So that is a budgeted corruption. That is uh, a way in which you put money that nobody can ever find out what it does. Now, uh, 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 no, yeah, we, it is a good point because I've always been wondering this confidential account, especially from the Ministry of uh, Interior for security purposes as well. I don't know how they operate in other jurisdictions because I find it even maybe from the US. Uh, we'll understand some of the purchases, you know, we have security, you can't just also expose yourself. But for the longest time, that has been a point of weakness with the confidential account. Is it, is it, is it inside the law? Well, what see, is the framework around these confidential accounts that you can actually stash away a lot of money like that and then there's no accountability? That's why it was coming in the finance bill. It's coming in the no, finance bill. No, that's what I'm asking. It's been a practice. It's not yeah. even, this is not the first time that we've had it in the finance bill. So what, what, that's what I'm saying, that budgeted corruption, that once you have a fund approved by law as confidential, it is confidential. It means that when you spend it, nobody can raise it. So, so, so these confidential accounts, can they have a threshold so that it, it doesn't go beyond some, some limit? In the first instance, then what is it for? You start by asking, yeah. if the presidency and the deputy president's office are fully funded, you are funded, your kitchen is, we are funding it, your workers, we are funding them, no, your no. electricity, we are paying for it, everything around you, why would you need a confidential fund? For what? So that you can use it to buy members of parliament, use it to buy off opponents, what is it for? Those are questions. To Preparations ask. for 2027? No, generally, by the way, this is not just for this government. Generally, but, but, the yeah. issue of confidential uh, accounts yeah, has always been around. The question, that's where we're saying, let us go into our budget and ask, what is this money for? All right. Fire cabinets. I don't know whether there's any cabinet position today that can be in on its own if it's not at the whims or at the pleasure of the president. So for me, I'm like, reorganize your government not at fire cabinet, get competent people. But if there's anybody cor corrupt, don't fire. Take them to court. Prosecute them. Because corruption is corruption, isn't it? If somebody steals, and you know we have, uh, you know the case of fertilizer. We've sat here, we've talked about it. Fertilizer has operations who are from very high level. And the, the sand that people are being uh, given, we are now saying that people are being compensated. And who has taken the money? Who had, what have we done to the people who took the money? It's that kind of thing that cannot inspire confidence. Let us see some serious heads rolling. Thank you. Let us see some serious action. Right. Barack? A corruption happens at the will of the top. And good governance also happens at the will at the top. Any time you see the performance of any government, you are seeing the will and the character that presides from the very top. So the day the president decides that he does not want corruption, it will end. And it will end that very morning. It will not go on even for three hours, for another two hours. But it has become that way, as I said the other time, because that is the intention. Everything you are seeing is working just the way it is designed and intended to be. So that um, there would be a change of heart at the very top, change of will at the very top, change of direction at the very top. And once the president decides that that is where the country should go, it does not matter whether it would be the same individuals who are there today or he brings on board a brand new uh, team. He could bring on board a brand new team if the philosophy and the direction is still the same. They will continue to do the same things that they are doing. They will continue to be extravagant because in a, a new patrimonial 
uh, 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 establishment, you know, new patrimonialism, where you are using public resources to buy loyalty, to buy following by members of uh, parliament. And the, the two gentlemen bring this out uh, very well, that you have seen the same fellows who are clapping. And this clap trap in this country, people who are clapping when the president was saying this bill must go through are the self same individuals who are clapping when he's saying that this bill has been withdrawn surely what do we have between our ears empty boxes sound and echo chambers or what do we have that two days ago or three days ago last week we had uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa parliamentary team in State House and they were clapping because this was a very good bill. The following week, it's not even a week later, the self same people are clapping that a bad bill mm. has been re rejected, it's been withdrawn. The, these are the problems of uh, sick of fancy, the problems of having self-serving individuals. We need in government people who do not fear being sacked. Mm -hmm. People who are not afraid that the president is going to ask them to resign mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they have no liabilities, they have not borrowed anybody's uh, money, mm -hmm. they are not uh, building uh, houses in Karen, they are not buying land in uh, Dubai, and uh, that uh, their only focus and loyalty is to the country and to duty. But just two other very quick things. The public service has kept coming up time and again. You know, within the public service in Kenya, we have got some of the most competent officers you could find anywhere in the world. In fact, the one reason this country keeps going is because of the public service that the politicians can say things to one another, the deputy president can throw brickbats at the boss, the boss will throw snide remarks, parliament will behave whichever way it is behaving, but somehow the country still holds. It's because of the public service. If you remove people like uh, Felix uh, Kosegei and other political types who have been appointed, in that service, beneath them, there's a very solid crust of professionals who know their work. And I'm afraid that uh, those people are not being allowed to work by this regime. That uh, they are getting instructions, in, I have it on authority, including text messages sometimes coming straight from State House that you will do this, that heads of uh, state agencies are not able to work independently board members that board members are being appointed <coughs> from yeah mm, that, that that you have uh, the, this uh, interference mm. by the executive everywhere and that is something that uh, we must uh, be very afraid of which um, Akira, if you want something to worry about or to worry for Mm -hmm. It is the public service. Uh, presidents will come and go. Yeah? There will be President Ruto. Maybe he will do five years. Maybe he will do ten. Maybe he will do less. That should not worry us. What should worry us is the stability of institutions, institutions that are being managed by competent public servants and who are now being interfered with they, they 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 are afraid when they look at a finance bill like the one which has just uh, been uh, uh, thrown to to the trash can they had an opinion they had advice which they gave to their superiors but it was that advice was 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 rubbished and that's why you end up where you are if they will allow the public service to work and respect that they're professionals, they were experienced, it will be very good. The last one uh, b b point here is about this traveling 
of uh, His Excellency the President. He cannot be another Rolling Stone, mm -hmm. another Vasco da Gama, like uh, I keep saying, traveling around the world like Phineas Fogg in 80, 80 days. The President needs now to take lessons out of the dissatisfaction, the disaffection in the country and sit down. He has got a minister for foreign affairs and there's a whole portfolio under that ministry. If you look at uh, the Gazette notice, the executive order, you will see that the one entity, the one ministry with the largest establishments in the executive order is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Affairs. There are enough people there, there are envoys, there are attaches, and His Excellency the President may once in a while go out where that uh, extra imprimatur is required, that extra stamp of presence is required. But he should stay around here, sit in State House, occasionally go to Harambe Avenue, listen, receive reports, receive wisdom, interrogate issues, read, think, decide, and govern. But he cannot be on this thing that looks like a, an endless, happy, go, lucky itineration that uh, has got the character of holiday making mm. and expect that he can be effective in that capacity as president. And he needs to listen, as has been said, to people like uh, ourselves, and I don't want to go to the space where he is. I want him just to listen. Right. When, when we are here All right. and saying the things we are saying, because we mean well for the country. Thank you. Right, uh, decline to recreate the positions of uh, Chief Administrative Secretary. Uh, and we've seen uh, that has really happened uh, because the National Assembly had passed and uh, also I have it on, on good authority as well that even when the protests were happening, uh, there is a letter from uh, the head of public service uh, that was written to the, the chair of public uh, service. This is Anthony Mushiri. And uh, it says, um, establishment of the complements of the chief administrative secretaries. We refer to the above subject. As you are aware, the National Government Administration uh, Amendment Act 2024, Act number 4 of 2024, was assented to into law on 2nd May uh, and uh, 2024 and effectively became operational 17th May 2024. The Act institutionalizes the office of a Chief Administrative Secretary in statute. In, let me try to just put it this way so that I can read it nicely, uh, in compliance with various decisions of the High Court on the subject. By dint of the law, the office of a Chief Administrative Secretary is established as an office within the public service responsible for, uh, I don't need to go to all these details. So this was happening even when uh, you know, uh, the protests were really ongoing. People were questioning, I mean, what, what is the discernment and discretion of actually putting this while we st still have all this furore? So the office is here. And this is what also the Gen Z, or it has created the radical reforms. Could we drop this particular office? Uh, is there any rhyme or reason of having this particular office before? But it seems it will take, uh, you know, we to take precedence. The, now it is a, it is law. No, no, it's still under it, discussion, or at still, least it, the law. There is a law for it. The question is: Is it necessary? Is this a good line of expenditure at this point in time? Now, again, one would hope that when the president is looking and taking advantage of this crisis, he will be looking to see what he can cut and what he can drop. And he can look at his friends in the, in the eye and say, I would have loved you, but you've heard what Kenyans have said, we must cut back and I'm not giving you this job. Uh, people like Kidero here will not die. I mean, he's not here, I would have told him, he would not die if he wasn't a cabinet sector. He's already a rich man enough, so he doesn't, really, he doesn't need that job. Uh, so we, but we can save money from uh, I mean, we can save taxes and put that money elsewhere. We can employ more nurses, we can employ more 
uh, doctors using that money as opposed to using it politically and rewarding political uh, failures. Mm -hmm. All right, keep it I don't want to call them political failures because some of them got over 200,000 votes. <laughs> okay, but losers. This is, this yeah. is losers. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Losers. Yeah, but uh, more important is that the timing may be wrong. Mm. And uh, as, as not as, now, mm. not now, mm. it may happen in future. But also, those people are not many, many of them have put in other positions. Some are high commissioners, some are ambassadors, and some have, uh, like Maura, is already a spokesperson, so he does not need to occupy that position. What possibly the president needs to do, because I think he's a political animal, and given that the fact that uh, some of these people played a role in his winning, he should see how to give them appropriate positions that will assist them transit. And as he said, there are people who may not need even that particular position. Uh, like some were debating, should I take it or should, not, should I not take it? So in that way, the president will be able to make something neat and allow himself to look good. But you see, the band you thought I never wanted to answer the other question of whether he should sack cabinet secretaries. My answer is no, he should not sack anybody because the problem lies with him. Mm. It lies with him because there's no deal that I know that has taken place, whether it is poisoned sugar, whether it is uh, the, the oil, uh, whether it is uh, the fertilizer. <coughs> if he was to suck, he has to suck the entire system that he has because everybody was involved in one way or the other. Uh, remember the fertilizer issue, the head of public service called some of these individuals to his office and they were trying to see how do we manage this thing that's now exploding on our faces. So my take is that the president may do that towards the end to redeem himself because, and we should not encourage him. We cannot, pre he cannot preside over all these corrupt deals and towards the tail end he sacrifices some individuals. Because I know if he sacked seven ministers at certain intervals, he will have redeemed himself sufficiently. But where was he when all this happened? This reminds me 1974, before the emperor of Ethiopia was removed from power. Uh, the, the dark regime went and told him, remove Barak Moluka, who is your minister for one, two, three. He said, take him. Remove Martin Olo, take him. Remove Kipruta Kilwa, take him. Remove Debal, take him. By the time they reached the seventh minister, they said, we have not come for any other minister, it is you. Because why is it that all these people did the things they were doing under your watch? Mm -hmm. So the president should realize that he's the chief executive. After the, the, the mandate that the people of Kenya was given by Article 1 of the Constitution, uh, it is he mm -hmm. that we donate that uh, position for him to donate to others. And any donee must realize that he's subservient to the donor. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the president, when his donees are behaving the way they have been behaving, he must rein them in. Otherwise, we cannot blame Moses Kuria for the oil. We cannot blame uh, Mithika Rinturi for the fertilizer. That's why I maintain that Rinturi was not going anywhere because I knew what was happening inside the fertilizer issue. Right, but the president himself also said uh, he is directing ACC to be investigating the edible oil. <laughs> it's <laughs> only a down the line. Yeah. But right? we need to follow that because this was the world is about the other investigations. The right? even there are so many investigations that have come across. Uh, even, uh, even that parliament uh, impeached uh, him, or rather the committee of parliament uh, impeached him and he was saved by the house, the committee of the whole house. Yeah. Yeah. Is it good enough for him to say, hey, so anyway, the, Barack says it. It starts from where he is. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Okay. I mean, corruption can only be fought from the top. Let's bring it to a close, Barack. Your closing remarks. Yeah, that uh, fish uh, begins uh, rotting from the head. Moishimiwa uh, Kipruto Kiro, you will allow me to use you as a uh, citation uh, to draw my conclusion. Uh, you have worried a lot and sympathized a lot with His Excellency, the <laughs> President. And President William Ruto does not need uh, sympathies or worrying. Uh -huh. What he needs is wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And uh, wisdom dictates that he forgets about a second term for now. Yeah, for now. For now. Let him focus on the term that he has, which could also very easily end up being the only term if uh, he doesn't uh, play the cards right. And uh, playing the cards right means doing the things that he promised to do, not necessarily all of them, but within the philosophical context and framework of what he said he was going to do. He was going to make this country prosperous. He was going to create jobs for young people. He was going to generate wealth. And to do all this, he has got to stop the hemorrhage of corruption, which has, has been said there previously. He was not very strong on during the election campaigns, but he has got to address that. He has got to lead by example and to know that it cannot be that you are saying you are going to fight corruption. Well, at the same time, the entire edifice and framework around you is busy in a primitive accumulation that within your cabinet, we are seeing virtually everyone who was broke the other day, they have become billionaires. Mm. Where is this coming from? Thank you. That we have these fellows who are running around with bags of money and dancing and doing choirs and saying that they are contributing and behaving in what I call the other day Pavlovian manner. You know about Pavlov, Pavlov and, yes. and the dogs yes. and, and, and the food and the salivation. Mm. Crisis creates leaders they provide good opportunities. Thank Let's you. see how President Ruto exploits this crisis. Right. Keep it your closing remarks. Briefly. Yeah, I just want to beseech the President that in the next na na national address, he should tell Kenyans these are the issues I expected to do in five years. I've reduced them to by half, and he sticks to that particular program. He may actually have smooth transition to the end of the five years. Otherwise, he risks his term being terminated midway. All right. But in all, we do have a great country. We all owe it uh, a lot of our work. We need to, we owe it our sweat, and so we need to do that. Mm -hmm. So we pray that even as we go through this week, we will reflect and it will only make us better. Mm -hmm. uh, the president is, is a human being. He has feelings, and uh, so sympathies a little bit are okay. <laughs> and we want to encourage him to wisdom. actually go into, no, yes, he needs wisdom, but he also has to have the <laughs> usual, he has pains also to go through. So we want to encourage him that as he goes through this, that he will also take time to reflect, maybe renew his uh, contact with his God and see the extent to which he can use this opportunity. And as we end uh, the ball, I think we've just seen a tweet this uh, morning from one of the news media about Teggy Jao, and it will be remiss of us not to condole with his family uh, because he's rested and uh, this is a great journalist now that we are in uh, a place of uh, you know uh, his area of trend so we'd like to really condole with his family he's a great journalist let him rest well indeed we join you indeed 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 of media in condoling with the family of Mutai 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 yeah, uh, in this particular moment. Of course, we know he was a prolific journalist. Uh, we learned a lot from him as well. Some of uh, the veterans yes. in this country as well. Yes. And Barack, I know this is right up your alley. I know yes. my director is uh, telling me to wind up, but uh, just, just contribute. Yeah, I've well, got to bridge, bridge, really briefly, just pa briefly. pass uh, my, my condolences. Uh, we learned a lot uh, from Tegin Jao. He was slightly ahead of uh, mm. some of us. We called him uh, the machine gun. Mm. Uh, he would ask you four, five, six questions and he's bombarding you and mm. he took, he was a very bold uh, uh, journalist who did a lot of uh, good work for this country, particularly for the democratic dispensation and uh, he will be sadly missed. Indeed. Our deepest condolences and uh, of course uh, sincere sympathy as well for the family as we're winding up. And also there's greetings here from Oliver Kisaka. Dr. Oliver Kisaka says greetings.
to the elders in the studio. Mm -hmm. Great discussions and analysis. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Really do appreciate. And thank you for your valid company in watching Ngozi today. Uh, just teasing out, teasing out some of these issues as well. We shall pick them up next week to see what is the uh, latest development as far as this is concerned. You've been watching Ngozi today. News Diary is up next.